Okay, just checking. Oh my god. Seems legit. I'm guessing there was a glitch in the cooling system. I'm no expert, but I think it went boom. Hmm. Well then, I guess I'm not going to get to be able to return my least nuclear reactor. It looks like I am going to have a lot of phone calls to use. And I only had two payments left. Uh, that's the story of my life. Hello world, Wave Time here, bringing to you another episode of EE Power. Yeah, as you can see, my nuclear reactor seems to have undergone some renovations. Now, the thing I am guessing what happened is pretty much this. The nuclear reactor uh, must have interfered with this chunk loading cell uh, seal, rather, quite interestingly. If I look it looks like it was pretty much just at judging by the blast radius it looks like it was resting pretty much on the border of the chunk loading seal which meant it's possible that uh, what happened was that the reactor interfered with it meaning that one of the reactor chambers was inside of the area but the reactor itself wasn't or more like the reactor was in it but the timer that was allowing uh, either the redstone signal from stopping it or the filter from throwing ice into it uh, wasn't loaded therefore yeah about that anyways so I'm not going to worry about that right now. My nuclear ambitions are going to be stymied a bit right now. And thank goodness I did not put it in the bottom of this nuclear in my industrial craft room. Because that would have been catastrophic. So, now on to the fun stuff. We got this pretty much working 100% of the time. And I'm thinking of a few ways to make this... Uh, linking book stand interesting now I don't want it to stay all the time because obviously you're going to be linking out eventually so what I'm thinking of doing is having this set to a timer or some sort of logic that will bring it up when a button is pressed or when a computer control tells it to do so it'll bring this up so the piston will remove the block it'll move up a few times wait a while and then go downwards that should probably make it so that well I'll be able to link through it then when I get back to the world it'll be hidden and everything so I can use my next book or something similar to that I don't have the specifics right now but I'm thinking we'll have something like that. So what we should do is uh, maybe make some logic for that. It's probably going to need some timers and counters. But what we should first do is get all of our, uh, our frame motors and our frames ready to go. So let's go over back way over here. I think I pre-ordered some of my uh, stuff. We got our frame motors. We already have a bunch of support frames, so we can use those. Uh, let's get a few more of those, and this should be enough covers. So let's run back and see. Wait, do we have a motor? No, we don't. That's what I was going. I need a bit more copper to be able to get this motor. You can tell I'm really prepared, but at least I have a nice little mine in which I can work with. Up we go. Okay, we have a battery box with us right now, and we also have two batteries. 
So what we'll do is charge these up so that we'll be able to test the potency and how well it actually works. I'm going to have to eventually reorganize my mess though I'm pretty much like that right now. So it's probably going to be a pretty simple algorithm with how we're going to do it. We're pretty much going to tell it to uh, pull that back so deactivate the redstone current then we'll have it move up however many times then etc etc so what we should do is start with getting a frame down obviously it's going to be a little difficult to start off with and I'm not sure will we be able to put the stone cover on this with that there that is a negative so let's get this out of the way and apparently using the inappropriate tube will cause us troubles now it's probably gonna get sucked into the transposer but we can deal with that eject thank you and there we go okay get our linking book stand and throw this on. It's now on. That's good. We'll just get this rid of right away. And let's put a few of these covers on it to start with. Now let's see. This is going to pretty much be its starting place. And if we get one more cover, we should be golden. Okay, now I'm not sure how many frames this will need. So one, two, three, four, it might need a fifth frame. So if we have this as the lowest point, we'll want it so that it does not go any lower past this. So we're going to need to put both of our frames here. And if we get the appropriate tool, which is always a plus, we can direct them to the appropriate direction so that's the downward motor and this is the upward motor so when this is as far as it can go it cannot bring it down anymore which is what we'll be looking for now let's put for now a battery box uh, let's not put the battery box right now Hmm. actually it won't hurt really just putting this as a test battery box so we'll feed these up a bit. That should be enough to get both of them ready. And do we have any levers? No, we don't. However, we can craft them. So two levers for experimentation. Hmm. We'll get rid of this right now since we don't need the headache. So bringing down obviously doesn't do anything. But if we move it up, okay, that's as far as that one will go. So let's check. Is it all the way up? No, it needs to go one more. So placing one more frame, like so. Let's move it down one. Put all of our covers on. and move this up now it can't go any more and we see that it has reached its height so now when it's here it'll just go back down when it is finished so like so and not interact with anything now to be safe we should put something to make sure that it doesn't go any farther like so and make it nice and pretty hang on I might as well uh, get my inventory nice and sorted because this is a wreck okay I think we're pretty much golden right now so let's get rid of these levers right now since we won't need them anymore and get our tool ready for use now what we should do is have some sort of way to control all of this. Pretty much what's going to need to happen is when we call the book, it'll have to be called, then it'll need to go into here, 
and it'll probably then need to be able to detect when that book is all the way up. Hmm. So we're going to need to have an item detector to be able to tell when an item is actually going into the inventory. So if we craft an item detector, that will be what we need. Now what is the item detect uh ick item detector? Item detector does still need quite a bit of stuff, so let's craft that and then we should be good. Fancy pants activate. Actually, considering that we're not using this anymore, probably if we can consider this a failed experiment, we can just steal one of these and we'll be good to go. La da 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 da. So maybe there's another way to uh, store all the IC2 electricity that we'll need later, but let's not talk about that right now. Okay, so let's figure out which is the input and which is the output. The input is closest here, so we should get that. Put this here. And therefore it'll go in and be able to detect the single item that will go through. We'll need mag tubes here, but this is pretty good to demonstrate. There we go. Now, pretty much the computer will control it. It'll bring the book out through the system, go up. This item detector will tick, and we'll thus need to be able to control a logic circuit. So it connects well, that's good. Which will tick the bottom motor a number of times. Now we do have a good uh, tick thing. We do have a good logic circuit ready for that. We're just going to need to get a counter to be able to do that. So let's make uh, two counters and two timers. So we have a counter and there's no question mark. That's unfortunate. So counter requires stone pointers, wires, two cathodes. So we're going to need four wires, four cathodes, let's see, where are my wooden sticks? Good. Four of these. And we're going to need a stone pointer, so we're going to need some more of these. There, let's get the cathodes. And what does the timer require? The timer requires, if I remember, three wires and a cathode at the bottom and another of those uh, wire thingamabobbers. So let's get the three wires, so six. We're going to get two of these timers that we'll need. You got that. We're going to need some more of these, get two of those, cathodes, and now we're just going to need to get the smooth stone again. So let's run back over, and honestly I should have a supply of this smooth stone since, you know, considering I use it so much, let's just get a full stack because we know we're going to need it. Okay, we're also going to need some more red wire to be able to do this. And I'm thinking we'll need a repeater as well. So let's get this out of the way in the meantime. So stone pointers, that's good. And we're going to need to make, how is it? Okay, so one, two, one, two. There. And that's good. So we got one down. And now we're going to need to make, wait, we got all of them. Two there, two there, two, two, two. Ah, I was close, at least. We're going to need some anodes instead. And I think that's good. Though I probably have spare anodes somewhere. And I need more stone wafers, so let's... Uh, 
get the stone wafers and we're also going to need to get other things uh, why am I even in my red power room I don't have anything that I need currently in my red power room let's just use one of these perfect and that's why I was gonna get I was going to go and get all of those other goodies ha ah, stop messing me up one, two two move there 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 okay we need more red wire that's a good reason to actually be in that room escape room escape escape and let's see we're probably going to need a bunch of them so let's just get uh, actually six would be a perfect number and uh, just in case we should get a repeater that should help a lot destroying my creations one block at a time okay here we are we got our logic which I think will be good and we got some extra wires which will be even better so let's try to get everything placed in a logical order so we're obviously going to need to start with the counter this counter is going to basically be incremented uh, by I'd say five so incremented by five and it'll decrement once every time this uh, timer goes so put the timer here spin it around twice and have it here and this thing will need to be at a interval of 0.8 seconds because that's how fast the motor goes so let's bring this around to the motor that goes down how are we going to do that what we're going to need to do is to get our stone covers stone cover stone cover go down and around and I don't think it will interfere at all with anything else so when an item goes through it'll go through that way and now when this is done we'll need to be able to basically have this uh, hmm. the only way to indicate that it's done is through that simple wire so what we'll have to do is either make a space for this which is probably the most simple option or have a uh, increased delay by this probably the best way would be to just make a space for the timer oops yeah, at least it works and we're going to need to decrement this again so let's just decrement it and that's not working is it sigh I would hate when things are so difficult decrement decrement thank you for using all of my energy okay there we go so what we're going to need to do is that wire works so we're going to have to substitute that with a colored wire and substitute those with a colored wire as well we don't really have any colored wires with us though we do have bundled cables so let's take this off of the circuit temporarily we can just keep it running for God knows how many times that won't matter too much and this will be an appropriate use of this so let's have this as like some yellow wire that will also go here so let's get a few colors what type of wool do we have well we got white um, I think we actually have some white wires with us right now white 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 here we go and let's get some orange and basically a bunch of dyes dyes will be good let's get some orange and magenta dyes in fact let's use cyan and purple dyes since we hardly ever use those okay running back and here we are and let's start with working with a few of these few purples to give us some added shine and some whites because you know whites are good so let's have the the purple 
be the one that's sending the ticks basically going to that red part. So we're basically going to need a pulse former. Now a pulse former forms a pulse when it receives a redstone current. So also going to need to get uh, some, hmm, that's going to be fun. Actually, that'll be simple. Uh, let's just wire this up a bit so that we know what we're doing. Okay, that seems decent so far. Now, it's basically elongating the circuit a bit, but ah uh, well. Okay, so basically the pulse former pulses whenever it... Um, sorry, distracted. Pulse former pulses whenever it receives a redstone signal, so what we're going to need to do is make some pulse formers. That shouldn't be too bad. Let's see. Pulse formers are made with a lot of stuff. So we're going to need basically a lot of stone wafers. And that won't be too much of an issue. Let's get two pulse formers. And that should be good. So we're going to need to take a bunch of our stone, cook it in an oven. And maybe some interdiction. Uh, not interdiction. Those... Uh, Induction furnaces. Yes, induction furnaces would probably be a very good bet. But considering that I am, you know, lazy, and for some reason laziness is awesome right now. Okay, catch you in a few. Okay, I think we pretty much have everything that we need. We'll just get these down. And yes, pulse formers. Okay, we got the pulse formers and the repeater is ready to go. So let's uh, put those down. Run like the wind. And down we go. Oh, wait, we're going to need also not just a pulse former, but this red stone is prima. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, we're also going to need an RS Norlatch, judging by this. You got some of the logic. Some of the logic is sound. But a lot of it isn't. Okay, so let's get this down first so that we'll get the rest of it when we're good. Okay, get this. And now a simple one of those. That'll be good. And this will go to another one of these counter logic arrays. So we'll need to get the counter, we'll need to get the timer, and do we need to have anything that basically goes from that? No. Okay. Hmm, okay, should we test this right now? No, let's not. Okay, counter, down, that's the good position, timer. We should put one of those in, honestly. So let's turn this around. Shift, still good. And we'll put this, and this is a good place for the cyan wires. Cyan wires will go in between here. We'll have the timer go this way so that it's facing the direct, correct, uh, correct direction. There we go. That'll be stopped when need to. Go down, increment up. That's good. And let's see. This will need to go to the up motor. So we'll have some whites going around also. There we go. And finally, we'll need to get a white there also. And we'll need to get that, which will have to have the cyan wire as well. But it will also need to be able to pulse and go off to a different wire, which will activate a transposer that will be here to send it back. Haha, -ha, that'll work. That might work, actually. Not just might, it will work. Okay, so let's try to get this working. Put this here also because we're going to need to activate it. Wait, it's going to be mag tube, so oops, and that's also uh, touching it. We don't want it to touch, so it'll need to be activated here. So we'll have to get 
the wire to come instead of there we'll have to have it go here we'll need to have some let's make this pretty in fact and instead actually make some cover strips so that we won't have all of the ugliness that is associated with it see they'll just simply block it without having to be magnificent about it okay so we'll need a few more of these there we go Cyan, ha, <laughs> Cyan, Hara. Okay, so now if we bring that there, we'll just be able to put two of these down and it'll be attached. But we'll need a pulse former instead, so we'll need to put that Cyan back and instead of the place that we have it right now, we'll need to put the pulse former right there and there okay so that's logic seems sound currently Whew, looking up really takes it out of man okay so let's work through the logic again to see if we have anything missing item goes through goes up into the item detector it gets detected and the item gets put in turning this on and sending it off now let's see put that up for a nice delay saying off this will tick a total of five times because of the counter and timer array and it'll bring it up because of the motor now when this turns back on to turn it off this will pulse and after a large delay it will activate this timer and counter array allowing it to continue going onwards and onwards and onwards when that is done it will pulse going through the cyan wire activating this ejecting it from the side okay it seems to work in theory so let's try it in practice I'm not going to look at the top because that is well in material it doesn't really matter too much what it looks like from the top and I just need to get a good linking book okay so send this through and it's going through I'm getting ready for the lag one two three four five it's at the top now it's going down again hmm huh okay so let's just do that again because we're missing something ah, that's a problem I think I see the issue right now so let's just test with that detect it again so we get it stopped okay it's at the top there we go and it didn't take anything from there okay that's an interesting thing now let's see what could be causing the issue well one thing that could be causing the issue is the pulse formers are not acting how we're assuming that they're supposed to act. How we're assuming they act is that they turn on, or wait, how many ticks is that anyways? Okay, we should get this out of the way and use the correct tool, or incorrect tool as it stands right now. Okay, got the book here and all the other junk speaking about other junk where are your bookcases <sighs> sigh why am I always seeming to put things where they do not belong bookcase 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 bookshelf there you are okay there we go that seems good now when we go through and drop this in again it should work now 
I'm not sure how many ticks that actually is. So let's just watch the pulse former to see if we're getting it correct. Watching, watching, watching. Huh. That's not how it's supposed to be going. Huh. Okay, so basically we kept on seeing that pulsing and pulsing and pulsing. There's no reason it should be pulsing like that. And it didn't even pull it at the end. Um, what's the cause of that particular thing? And it's still not getting it from here. Okay, um, let me just try to see if we can do anything like this. Let's try once more and actually think about it while it's wa working. So pulsed once and it keeps on pulsing for some reason. And it didn't go far enough. What the hell? It should that physics shouldn't happen. Oh, 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 I see it now. The issue right now is that it's also connecting to the timer. So this purple wire needs to instead go down and connect like so and stop it. This has to be off of it. And now it's stopped. That's good. Now it's not working. But what was happening was that this was pulsing and bringing it and continuing onwards. So this should cause it to be correct. This means that logic will have to be altered slightly as well because we don't want it pulsing like that. So we'll have to bring the wire around like that. So now it should work if we actually destroy this. So let's get the book and try again. Now what we're going to need is we're going to eventually want to get a repeater in there. But to solve that issue, let's just increment it up by one on that counter so it'll only uh, finish when it gets to the very bottom. So here goes nothing, hoping that the repeater's timer is at the correct number of ticks. Let's watch. It'll go in. And then it'll go down. And it throws out. Yes, this works. This system is 95% operational. So what the thing that we're going to have to make sure is maybe get one more delay on that so it'll probably last a lot longer I'm going to test it once more and then see where everything else stands it's just fun to watch okay and that's actually a good amount of time to link maybe not the perfect amount but let's see it once more when we're at the top Huh. I see an issue right now, but I'll get at it later. Okay, now I can go to the nether easily, unless it gets thrown away. Which could be an issue. Grab my book, and then continue onwards. Okay, it looks like that's pretty much all the time we can do anything right now. We'll catch up later and maybe work on a way to get the piston operational so that it actually uh, opens up. Then this pillar of awesomeness comes out. That doesn't look like it's too hard. Maybe just a simple RS Norlatch attached to like a knot gate and a pulse former. So when this turns off, it'll trigger the RS Norlatch, go on to that 
thing, then at the end, this will also be triggered to a not gate and pulse former. That might work. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of EE Power. If you like what you see, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to future episodes. Way of time here. Signing off. Have a wonderful day.